Today we will continue our discussion of different state, uh, states and political systems, how states can be organized, political systems can be organized among democracies today in the world. We will continue with uh, France today, but I uh, posted and you have a material online um, that contains, again, a uh, rundown through uh, the map of Europe across centuries because we need to understand how these you know, contemporary realities of state and political system were formed, also uh, <coughs> more recent uh, maps of uh, Europe. And uh, we will use this for both, both France and Germany because it's interesting to see how two neighbors have developed so differently. And we touched on this several times already. So uh, just a brief rundown uh, now here uh, in this lecture, in this video lecture um, over these maps, followed then by the second part by the next part, uh, which will be the analysis of today's France's uh, state and political system. So let's look at these maps. <coughs> and notice that we started with, uh, obviously, 1800 Charlemagne uniting all those, well, not uniting, extending his control over all those Germanic tribes. Francia was, uh, you know, his rule. But then he dies, and it doesn't last long. His uh, sons divide the territory, as I mentioned, just uh, keep following the map, <coughs> East Francia and West Francia, and that will be later will develop into what will, you know, uh, Germanic speaking, German speaking, and French speaking, but that will take centuries for that. But notice how an accident of history generates uh, much later realities, and notice also that again and again realize that today's realities are just temporary realities and they were shaped by very concrete historical factors. So let's go on <coughs> to look at uh, 1100, 1200. Well, what you see here is, you know, Holy Empire, it wasn't an empire. So what you should see here is a very loose combination of uh, princedoms. What's important in the third kind of like this. This is 1300. And this, is, this, way, this is going to be, by this time, a more distinct cultural identity has been formed here. And you see 1300, maybe around this time, uh, a stronger central government and, and lasting dynasties are uh, formed in France. Unlike here, where you have thousands, hundreds, thousands of little princedoms and bishoprics and this and that and so on, typical medieval uh, arrangement. And this is going to be a continued reality. And we saw how important this is when the modern states are formed, that uh, in France, after the revolution, the borders already existed. It's only that now they will, become a, they will receive a different meaning. They will become actual borders, the way we understand them today. Before that, they were just porous. Uh, you know, we just used them on maps to make sense. So let's keep an eye on, on the fact that this is going to be the reality in 1400, 1500, you see, 1700, yes, and 1800. So the same thing, right? The same thing. In 1800, of course, French Revolution, Napoleon, you see that France has expanded, but it's going to contract again. But you see that this patch has remained, of course, not in the sense in which there is a modern state today, but still uh, with, a, with a central source of uh, order, the king, who did manage to develop a pretty strong bureaucracy uh, to tax the territory, to control it. <coughs> so, a strong central power, not here, not here. There never has been a Germany. There never has been a Germany. So this is uh, 1800, and this is, we talked about this, the time of uh, the invention of the modern nation, the invention of the modern uh, democratic uh, system, and uh, the Germanic states are obviously uh, affected by that, and they're affected by the success of this, this new unitary state, right? Now what happens in France, we're going to deal with Germany when we get to Germany, and what happens in, in France is that, that the revolution, a strong centralized government is formed, but the revolution, which lasted uh, several years, obviously, 1789 and on, was followed by what? By an empire, right, with Napoleon, and then actually followed by many, many other regimes. But what remained constant, and here's where you see the difference, what remained constant is the state. The state continues, and it has been there for centuries, even if not in the same way as, as today, 
But the political systems, right, the arrangement of the political institutions, wildly different. They had a monarchy, they had an empire, they had a commune, they had first republic, they had a second republic, a third republic, and, and, and so on. So all these forms of, uh, uh, you know, this, you see how political systems can change. And how the political system is not the same as the state. Even if in the US, state, political system, and nation were basically shaped together through political means. But that's a different reality. Here, state pre-existed political systems, right? Here, it didn't actually exist. But just keep an eye on this and um, notice uh, this difference. Well, by 1871, and we're going back to the Taliban canvas, you see there's something different. Suddenly, you have something called the German Empire, and you also have, by the, for example, Italy for the first time in history, right? Why? This was, these were unifications of all these different Germanic <coughs> princedoms, and for example here many other princedoms and city-states, remember Machiavelli and so on. Unifications that weren't necessarily voluntary. But there has been this current, ongoing current of, you know, it's the age of nationalism, is the idea that the people should rule themselves, but then who are the people, well let's define a nation and so on. And obviously, here are the two opposite examples, let's define a nation based on what? The state because that pre-exists the nation in many ways, then French language, then French culture. But here, you're like, you will ask, well, how, how do we draw a line? When do we know where Germany would be, right? Who are the Germans, right? Well, guess so what? The Swiss are not. And guess what? The Austrians would say no. Right? Then we're not German, we're Austrians, right? This is, you know, these are not fixed realities, as you would like to imagine them. So the German Empire is, uh, unified is very successful actually and actually it's, it, it is born through a war with France actually all the wars in the last two centuries have been fought basically here and between these two countries so huge huge rivals and all the bloodshed here and this will make sense when we talk about the European and why European Union briefly towards the end of the quarter but right now notice again this is 1871 to 1914 after World War One. You see a Germany that is uh, changed, but it's expanding in this way, in this uh, <coughs> direction. Um, again, France is here. France is here. Then we have obviously World War II, Nazi Germany, and so on. After World War II, Cold War. Again, France is the same. You see the, the continuation. However, you have two Germanies. You have an Eastern Germany, which was under uh, Soviet influence, not control, it was never part of the Soviet Union or these countries, but influence, communist Soviet influence, and then Western Germany. And this will be the reality for about 50 years, from 48, so, say, to, um, and so on, until 1989. Famous fall of the Berlin Wall. Well, falling, you know, wall falling doesn't change much, but it was, it's a symbol for what happened, which was the fall of all the communist regimes that were imposed after World War II here, so 50 years. And then you have a reunification again. You see, German statehood, not a solid thing. Germany, as we know it today, it's only has been re, uh, rebuilt um, in, uh, for in the last well, 25 years. 25 years ago. Um, and also, if you notice, if you scroll to these maps and compare, you will notice that Germany has been moved. It was here, and it has been moved a little bit after World War II. Yeah, that actually happened. Uh, notice the borders. So, but France, this, right? so this is uh, a Cold War, here's Europe today, you see again, quote unquote unified Germany, but which Germany again that defined, you know, it's not the same, right, not the same as the German Empire, <coughs> again, Austria is different, Switzerland is different, France, as we know. So that's, that's a brief overview of the, of the maps, and we will talk about France. <coughs> 